Oh, hello, amigos and the friends. It's Donald. Welcome back to my kitchen. And on today's menu, we'll be taking a look at the new Pokemon expansion coming out early next year. Collection Sun, Collection Moon, which I think will be just one expansion set for us. But how good are these cards? And how do you make good decks about them? So, this is what this video is about. Let's jump right into it. Now, Primarina GX. GX? Oh, I'm sure you heard of it, right? They're replacing GX. They are technically the new EX cards with a new GX attack. Basically, these attacks are powerful. They're above power, uh, the normal limits of a regular attack would be. So they're stronger. And they usually have some well, amazing effect, usually. But we'll take a look at that at this right now. So this is a stage two GX. You evolve it like a stage two, and we know they take a lot of deck space. They're a bit slow, so as long as the payoff is good, it might be worth it. Whoa. 250 hit points? Well, that's top of the line right there. Wow, Lord has the highest amount of hit points, and this is it. So, very, very hard to take down with stage 2 GX. Now, how about its first attack? Oh, this looks familiar. Are you familiar with Dark Rye Giratina Xerneas Giratina? Because it does 20 more damage with the amount of water energies attached to all Pokemons. Yeah, just like those decks. Those decks are good because Giratina uses double dragon energy, which is technically a double water energy to scale with this. So I know it's gonna be slower, but I know those decks are strong, so it's gonna be this thing is will have very similar power level. Which means I have my faith in Pokemon uh, well, Pre Marina GX already. Now, its second attack is Ocean Sound, which is Dragonite EX attack. Remember that video? Here it is, 120. Oh, almost a two shot. It's a little two shot of many other Pokemons, but it always discards an energy. Your opponent will never charge up the active, and if you lie Xander, whoever they're charging up, it could be a disaster. So, what's bad about it is you can't charge it up with double colors energy, just like uh, just like Dragonite. But you mainly will focus on using Bubble Beat. So treat it as a Xerneas, treat it as a Dark Rye, which are faster, but they don't have this uh, the hit points or Grand Echo GX. So you can only use this move once as all GX attacks, and it heals everybody back to full health. Huh. I mean, you're thinking, how could that be useful? Here's the thing: with the Giratina Dark Rye strategy, with Xerneas Dark Rye strategy, you never ever want to give up any of your Pokemon. Why is that? They get knocked out, they lose energies, Bubble Beat's damage will decrease. So you're going to be juggling this, well, Pokemons in your deck a lot. With a retreat, when they're weakened, pull them back, pull them back, and then if you can get a good Grand Echo, heal them all back to full health, and that's going to be a disaster. Your opponent would not have enough firepower to trade against all your Pokemon. That's going to be the best case scenario. So... I have my faith in you, Premier G, Pre Marina GX. All right, it's a shame I didn't pick you in the game because I had like Greninja, uh, Ash Greninja. So moving on to Incineroar, this is my uh, my Sun and Moon Pokemon here. So this is also great too. Stage two, same crazy hit points and a good fast attack. Hustle Blow, one energy, so easy to do. You have to bench fill it with Fire Pokemon, all of it, all five. 110 damage, one energy. Very fast, very easy to do, and it works with the max potion. What, why is that? Well, you're only discarding one energy to heal it back up to 250, so that's 240 potential healing. Good luck getting rid of the Incineroar at this point. Now it does have optional attacks, where uh, you can't use Hustle Blow for some reason, which uh, well, you could use Tiger Swing. Flip two coins does usually 130 damage, sometimes 180, and sometimes 80 damage. Great two-shot potential, sometimes a one-shot on certain Pokemon. So if you can't use Hustle Blow as your two-shot, then use Tiger Swing. Now, look, I have to go back with the bench space. You want to protect it from the parallel city, which shrinks your own bench space. So I think a good tech that works with this would be Shrine Barrier Ninetales. Yeah, because now 
they can't play a stadium. They can maybe remove your stadium, but they just can't play it. So we'll be putting a Scorch Earth and Nine Tails in this deck for sure. And like Giratina and the Pre-Marina too. So, okay, and the GX attack. Woo! Three energies for 200 damage with pretty much no penalty. Well, that's GX there for you. 200 gets a lot of Pokemon, but against other GX Pokemon, it barely, barely misses the one-shot mark. So we'll be seeing how we can do it, boosting its extra damage, which we'll see with Professor Kukui in a bit. Now it does do the new burn effect, which I believe just behaves exactly like poison. So maybe the burn may finish off uh, your opponent if they don't switch. So ah, it's barely, barely getting the one shot. But we'll move on. Let's go into, ooh. I'm sure this guy is going to be very popular. It is top of level hit points, a little bit less than the others, but it's faster than all of them. Because you can use the Forest of Giant Plant Stadium, evolve two, three of them right away off the bat, and you're going to get free damage. Feather Arrow! Think of Golbat, think of Greninja Break, this thing is going to look so similar. Free damage. Free damage every once during your turn. You get to put two damage counters anywhere you like. You can get several of these up. They're all tanky. They're fast. This is this is gonna be my favorite. I mean, this is the favorite right here. And what else? Mm, Razor Leaf. 90 damage. When you add in Feather Arrow, that's gonna be easy two shot potential. But man, your opponent getting hurt for free anywhere for. It's it's amazing. I think this is gonna be so expensive when it uh, comes out. Now let's look at a GX attack, Hollow Hunt. Three cards from the discard right into your hand next turn, so you can play them all. I suppose there may be a situation late game because that's where when you're gonna get the most useful, valuable stuff in your discard. So it's not gonna help you get ahead, but maybe maintain your lead, sustaining. There we go. So this Sijui, I mean your Ashes Pokemon. That he chose for the anime, so of course you're gonna get the most uh, coolest of the you know, all the stats. Although all three of them are good, favorite wise, Decidueye, Incineroar, and Primarina. Okay, so what sort of tech would you run with Decidueye? I think I would run four copies of these. The other ones, maybe I could go with three, but definitely four copies to get them all out quickly up. What would I use as a, um, you know, as a backup? Like I told you Nine Tails and I told you uh, Giratina with the other one. I think the good compliment would be Tauros. Something that helps it with his weakness because, you know, you can make a complete Decidueye. It's good and powerful by itself. But if you want something to go against fire, a couple of Tauros. We'll talk about Tauros in a bit and why it's good. Now, oh, Pinsir. This is the most troll of troll attacks. One double colorless energy gets you sky throw. Flip a coin, game of chance. If heads, you return all your opponent's Pokemons, all energies, attackers, all evolution cards back to your hand. Think about what happens if I took my time to evolve a stage two. Now with the Sigilai, it does not even care. You can just drop them all back down with the forest of giant plants. But if I use rare candies to evolve these two, it's gonna take a long time to set them back up couple two or three turns so he has to get lucky though and he never gets a KO so if you keep on doing it he's just not gonna get any prize guards so those are two traps but it you can get lucky lucky and I know I just did an ag on deck I'm not gonna trust my luck with this one eh I don't think so it looks crazy but not gonna be crazy so we have Oh man, rare switches, rare nest ball. Nest ball, hey, if you're using a deck with all basic Pokemon, say, uh, Volcanion, it's gonna fit. It's better than Ultra Ball, only fits style certain type of decks. So, hmm, okay, a keeper. What else? Joros Toros GZX. It is a colorless type. It fits in many decks and very low energy cost, which means it's much more usable than any of the, you know, the other splashable EGX Pokemon. So, how does it work? You're gonna be using the Fighting Fury Belt, upgrading this to 220, and with a double colors energy, 70 damage with the belt. Wow, you just drop one energy, 70 damage? It is fast, so it is a three shot, but because of the rage right here, it reflects all damage it has taken back at the enemy with 20 more. You've seen this last video 
with uh, Mega Aggron. Or Aggron's attack, it's good. So, 70 right off the bat, follow up with a Rage. It is a very, very efficient, very efficient Splashable GX card that will fit many decks. And Mad Bull GX, one shot. If it gets hit enough, 30 per damage counters. So let's say it loses half his life. 100 damage off, that's 300 damage. Mad Bull GX is going to do something. And very tough to take out of 220 pit point Pokemon. So everything's going to line up very well. This card's good. This card's good. You could even make a whole deck out of it. But hey, it's, it's meant to splash. That's why it's colorless, right? So I like this GX. Umbreon GX! A stage 1 GX if it happened to evolve from a regular Eevee. Interesting. Let's take a look. Strafe, 30 damage. You get to switch it. This is just, oh, I'm, I'm starting out. I have nothing to do. You may, so you're just going to slap it for 30. Nothing special. Shadow Bullet. This is the original Dark Ride EX attack. 90 damage, 30 splash. And the going back to the day, that splash is very meaningful. Yeah, now you get to choose, so you don't really need an Absol, but I suppose Absol would be something you run with this. Yeah, so Shadow Bullet, it's not quite a two-shot. It's so close to a two-shot, but the enemy's coming off from the bench, it'll be a two-shot. So, uh, average power, but still good. It's got all the stats. It's going to be easy to make an Umbreon GX deck. I'm what I'm saying. You're going to use it with the Evil Tall to help it with its weakness. Because all the synergies with the same energy cause, Evil Tall, Umbreon GX, great deck right there. Now, Night Cry GX. Woo! This card, two energy cards off your opponents in play, Pokemon in play. And that could really mess them up if they don't have energies to attack. Oh, it would definitely ruin my Terminator deck. It would ruin my uh, Agron deck. Big, heavy energy attack Pokemon, they are screwed. So, this. Overall, very playable card. I like you, Umbreon GX. You and Evil Tall, you're gonna kick some butt. Now, Lunala GX. Ooh, man, this is gonna show up a couple times, but let's take a look. Stage 2, 250, just like Incineroar and uh, Decidueye. Same class, a bit slow to get out, but hey, this attack, this ability, this free ability has been seen so many times all over Pokemon. The list is the most recent one is the Gold Duck Break. Only Psychic Energies? That's okay. I mean, it's a Psychic Pokemon, Psychic deck, but it makes Max Potion viable. Move all your energies off, heal this sucker back up. You have a dangerous Pokemon. Now, four Psychic Energies. This is one of the most expensive attacks I've seen because it's the same, the exact cost, no DCE. So you're going to have to use some Max Elixir, something to load it up, something fast like a Tauros. To help you in the meantime, well, actually, you know, Max Potion doesn't work with Tauros. We'll have to think about that one. Lugia. Oh, yeah, Lugia. What would you do with tons of energies? You help it with a Lugia. Max Potion. And Lunarfall GX. Knock out a basic Pokemon that is not a GX. Ah, oh, you really want to get a GX. But it is one prize card anywhere, anytime, and it could get you the clutch win. So, it's not the strongest of GX, but it's I don't like a Lysander, so we'll see. We'll see. It definitely has a place and a time for this, but not something you would gain momentum, change the time of the game in. It's more like something like steal the game from somebody. So, this is a great ability. Max Potion, two shot potential right here. The fact that they can't heal is going to be very situational, but I'm sure it's going to come and help out someday. Almost a two shot. It can't two shot itself, but it'll two shot pretty much everybody else. So, Ludala, going to be easy to make a deck with that one too. Laurentis GX. Stage 1 involves before Mantis, but it is a grass. Forest of Giant Plants, easy. So, power supply, 40 damage, and you get two basic energies. Any energies. Probably could be grass though, because it's a grass Pokemon. From your discard to any of your Pokemon, to itself, to the bench Pokemon, so it's a good early attack, but maybe something you may not do in the mid game. You're going to be using Solar Blade, Grass, Grass, ooh, no DCs here, two shot. Yeah, 240 two shot, and it heals itself a little bit, so it can push itself to uh, survive long enough for three attacks. It's pretty good. It's very fast, and it has a Chloral Size GX, which does not sync up with its abilities, because it does 50 damage with the Grass energies attached to itself. 
how many energies do you need to one-shot new other Pokemons? With uh, four, that's 200. You, know, you see, it's not gonna even one-shot itself with force of five. All those are excessive. But if you really, really had to get the KO, a one-shot KO, yeah, you can force it out, but you would have to waste energies that could go into another Lorantis. So, overall, it is fast. It's got the numbers. It's gonna be easy to make a deck with it. What would you run with this? Probably a Tauros. <laughs> yeah, Tauros. You can squeeze in so many decks or something that wants energies. Lugia? Why am, I, why am I suggesting those as weak to fire? And maybe they can help you out counter its weakness. Otherwise, it's a good standalone Pokemon on itself. Doesn't really need you know, a helping friend. So, Lorantis? I like it. You could be easy to do. Lily, hey! You got, the, you got that Cosmog in your bag, right? So, this is Bianca. Nobody ever played Bianca back in the day because if the cards you need aren't in your hand, I don't know if this will get it. It's good if you have a low hand, but if you have a full hand and you, know, you need something else, something fresh, that's when you use N. That's when you use Sycamore. So, hmm. Hmm, that's all I can say. I'm, maybe I may squeeze one in. If you get on your first turn, which is not going to happen very often unless you use a four copy of this. So, I'm thinking I may get stuck with Lily. So, not not sure if she can replace you. Probably not replace Anna Sycamore just yet. We'll see about that. Next up, Team Skullgrunt. You look at their hand, your opponent's hand, their two energy cards there. It's gone. Now, given how I make my decks, I know if this card is used against me, I'm gonna have no energies. That's okay, I'm just gonna play Sycamore, I'm gonna play N, and I'll be good to go. But for sure, if this gets played, you're gonna have no energies, or your opponent will have no energies. But if you see a Sycamore, I can get by. I can get by, you you just wasted a supporter. You just waste, you know, card power, card draw power, which you need to set up your Pokemon, so... I don't think so. I don't think so. We're not gonna talk about these again. They're the more, uh, reprints of, uh, different variant art versions of the copy. So, let's see, Rainbow, Lily, Team Grud, Poison Bar! Uh, Muscle Band is not coming back. Not being repent, so we have the poison bar. When your Pokemon attacks, this enemy attacks your Pokemon, they get poison. Guaranteed that poison will burn them for two damage, just like a terrible muscle band. But hey, it does sync up with uh, certain Pokemons, such as Sceptile, the Polyrath, which we're gonna talk about, or it's just a good free two damage. So, not so bad. Not so bad. Probably have much more sustainable than using Bursting Balloon. So, yeah, I'd use this poison barb. So, moving on, we have switches, nest balls. I think we talked about the nest ball. The big ball of Malasada. So this, it removes special conditions quickly, and it heals a very low amount of damage. I don't know if this is worth the deck space. I'd probably just keep Nurse Joy here, but this is kind of like the variant of the potion. Nobody ever plays potion. And this is so situational, so is this worth the card space? Probably not. Probably not. Energy retrieval? We already exist. Oranguru, the very, very cheap, bad sushi master. Like, this is the student sushi master. It's basic. It's fast. And once during your turn, you can draw until you have three cards in your hands. Thinking back at all the situations I had, I always had at least three cards in my hands. They may not be the right cards, but I always had three cards. However, if there are new uh, text that focuses on shrinking my hand, to extreme points, Orangaroo may help me out. But when I start feeling that I need it, I'll keep you in mind, Orangaroo. When I feel like I'm starving all the time, I may use Orangaroo. Maybe. Maybe, because it's fast. Other than that, there's no... Uh, we'll pass the bench on to the side for now. So, okay, there are going to be a lot of Pokemons like this. They're stage 2, they have stage 2 level stats, and they may have almost kind of two-shot potential. But other than that, they're kind of like mini EXs. They're not too interesting. I'll point them out. This is like a, you know, this is stage you with good enough stats. It's good. It's playable, but it's boring. So we're going to move on now. That's one of those cards. We have, oh, this is back. This, this is like the best EV that's ever made. It's being reprinted. Once during your turn, you attach an energy and it automatically evolves based on the energy type. So fire energy, Ball straight into Flare Island. So those evolutions back in Primal Clash, uh, I believe, oh, maybe Origins, but those EVs that 
changes stage one Pokemon types. They'll be a little bit more playable, as well as the new GX. You saw Umbreon, you saw Espeon. Just attach the energy and you could straight evolve it to its GX forms. Great, makes them much more playable than they, well, they would have been without it. So, excellent, glad to see you back. Toro, skip. You have to evolve a stage one Pokemon, a Pharaoh. In order to play attack with a red card, nope, this is skip. It looks good, skip. Dragonite, oh, okay, we're gonna lightly talk about this one. It has two shot right here, but two energy discards specific for a two shot. They're much better, more fun ways to do this. So, wow, five energies, half works. I see this, I see Agron, I'm done. No Dragonite, nope, we are gonna skip you. So, Grand Bull. It's one of those, okay, it's one of those stage uh, regular Pokemon that does kind of have stats, but a bit boring. So, skipping all out, same as Sharpedo, same as we already talked about this, Alolan Radicate. Some people might say, oh, man, Dark Design. You have to evolve it, you have to put it with energies, and basically it does what you should be using your trainers for. Looking for the exact guards you need and putting it into your hand. I don't think it's worth the deck space. I don't think it's worth the time, the energy to charge it up. Just use your trainers to get whatever you need directly and not the alone and eradicate. However, it may work with some strategy in the future, so we're gonna put it aside. Nah, nah. Moving on, Battle of Sand, it's it's one of those Pokemon that you know, good, okay stats, nothing special about it. So is uh so is Crab Brawler. Actually we, we missed this evolution one, so we're gonna go with Gigalith. It may be one of those uh, funky fun decks because of its rock can attack. It's something that exists right now. Ribbon Camrops? Yeah! Much lower activation cost. Actually, there may be something else that exists. Team Magma's Agron. Yeah, so it exists already. It works with Team Magma's Camrops. And you can do a similar strategy. Oh, it's gonna be tough to get this out, but because it's a stage two, it does have the EX hit points and it, it's more of a funky deck you could use for fun. Basically, with the rock cannon, and it's something we've seen it before. It's got the stats. Let's move on. Stop talking about that. So, Lunala, we talked about you, and it evolves from stage two, which we've seen. Hypno. Nope. It doesn't even make the two shot hit points. Alola and Muck. Basically, you have a stadium right now that's called Silent Lab, and this is exactly what it is. As long as it exists, then in order to get rid of it, you have to. Uh, it's stronger than the. Uh, it's stronger and easier to get out than a Garbodor. You don't have to waste an item on it. And it only works on basic Pokemon, though. So, luckily, I hope that Garbodor doesn't come up. But only basics? We can manage with that. A lot of good abilities come from evolved Pokemons anyway. I mean, that's how you gain powerful abilities. So, not gonna be too great. So, moving on. Uh, this is like a really bad Pikachu. Pikachu does 50 for every lightning energy you discard. So you run Magnus Zone with this, the Pikachu is gonna be very sad and questioning you, like, well, why are you doing this instead of Pikachu? So, moving on, Vickavolt, strong charge. Oh, this looks great, but it's a stage two. It costs a lot of deck space, so whatever basic you're charging up probably isn't gonna be uh, too great. You're probably not gonna, well, can't use two long evolution chains, but man, it would work great with that dragon that you saw, but, eh. It's a lot of deck space, but this is a great energy acceleration. Very specific. Half grass, half lightning energy. And right now, I just can't think of any amazing decks that this would help out. This one, Tauros, he doesn't need that much. Lugia? Yeah, yeah, so just I'll put them on the shelf. And then when when the right energy acceleration works, Vicka Vault's gonna be in it. That's all there is. Now, this energy cost, three discard. I played so many decks with three discards. Sucks. And the, this is two shots, so much easier ways to attack. Park. This card is parked. Lantern! Skip. Technically a two shot with a water energy, but boring. So, another boring card. This is pretty much a reprint of Articuno. First attack. Actually, we said it's boring. We're gonna move on. So is Crabumbo, which is quite a strong stage one, but very expensive attacks. Three water energies, four energy costs. It is a two-shot potential, but that's... Okay, it's one of those boring, but high enough... Scratching high enough stats Pokemon. 
So was the Pelipper. That thing doesn't even two shot. Not a two shot. Polyrath. Ooh, 150. Another one of those. We're gonna briefly talk about it because it has to wake up slap attack. This is essentially if your enemy is poisoned, like with a poison bar with Aria Dose with the Hypno, it does 160 damage. That's a two shot. It's slower than Dark Rai, which does the same thing, and slower than Sceptile, and maybe even uh, Machamp too. So those faster EXs, then they'll, they'll replace Polyrath anytime. So we're gonna move on from there. Shinonic. Shinonic. This is like a free Ultra Ball every single turn. Works only with Grass Pokemon. Any Grass Pokemon. So is it worth the four card space that you're gonna put into it to build this up? I think it's gonna be tough. I'm gonna do it at least once to see how it works. But overall, I think I'll be relying on my Ultra Balls, saving those bench space, card space, valuable card space for something else. We'll see, I think it's a no. So we talked about Laurentis, we talked about Pincers. Nope, okay. The Rotom Pokedex is not worth your card space. If something's stuck in your prize, you just deal with it or you use the town that. No Rotoms, it's very random too, because it shuffles your prize back to your deck and you well, put them back in the bank. So it's not really achieving something that's not worth the back space. Now, Ultra Ball, Secret Rare. The current Secret Rare Ultra Ball is expensive, so this could probably be much cheaper. And, oh yes, I'm gonna finally get a, get a set for myself. Goomshu, ooh, Donald Falls from Donald Trump. Nice hair, man. It's very hard to tell the spectrum for that. Okay. We're not gonna talk about it. You probably will get the joke inspectability. You get to look at your opponent's hand. If I had information on your hand, it's gonna be I'm gonna have a quite a nice advantage. But is it worth deck space? This is an alternative to Taros because it does have the damage to two shot. It needs Professor Kokui. But that's fine, that it made good a good neck. Like, Make a good a backup attacker. Um, we'll see how this ability plays out. I I know it's good, because I would love to have that information to use that uh, for myself. Gum chance, the enemy is using a big heavy energy attacker. Say Lunala, something with well, hopefully four energies, because it is 50 for any energy on your opponent. That scaling, it's pretty good. You need at least four to do 210. And we're talking about EX level, so that's how much it needs to knock out itself. Otherwise, Gum Chance will probably barely be scraping it. Okay, so, however, it only takes one energy to do, so that's the you know, balance. Sogaleo will be so good and expanded. We'll talk about that, but here we go. 250, stage two. Takes a bit to evolve. Takes a bit of time, just like Lunala. Discard all energies, and you need three to use Sun Steel Strike. The payoff is you're gonna get the KO if it's a big EX Pokemon. But, uh, you know, it can't even KO itself. It's gonna get most GX you come against, but refilling is gonna be tough. However, Soul Burst is gated by the stage two. If this thing was could be used much earlier, it'd be awesome. Five of any energy cards didn't attach to your Pokemon, so you're good for two Sun Steel Strikes. Maybe even three because you're charging your energy, so that may be enough for you to win. Why am I saying Expanded's great? Brazong would be so epic with its Ultra Roll. One free switch every single turn. Oh, with Brazong. Okay, so standard is gonna be a little bit more limited. I have to really think about what this could help with. I'm thinking Lugia because who else would want five energy cards? Five energy cards on your Lugia, or your Mewtwo or something. That'd be pretty cool, but overall, I'm, this is gonna be a little bit less than you know all the other GXs that I've seen unless you're playing this in Expanded, which is gonna be fantastic. So, well, we'll see about the Sogalito standard. Now, Espeon, we talked about Umbreon. Espeon's time, so, you know, has, we have the good Eevee now. Psybeam, same damage, causes confusion. This is good. When you see your opponent's card flipped around, they're gonna be like, oh, is my attack gonna miss? It's permanent until they retreat or do something about it. So, one of the best first attacks like very, this is for a cheap attack. It's excellent. Next up, Psychic. Two shot potential, 60 damage. There's 30 more for every energy on your opponent's Pokemon. They're at least gonna have one. So that's at least 90 damage. Two, 120, easy two shot potential. So it's likely that you're gonna get a two shot. Okay, Division GX, 100 damage any way you like. 
Man, it's gonna take a long time to, you know, do this actually in game, but this is kind of like a, a Lysander, what it does for Lysander. Instead of, you know, Lysandering out, you hunt for it directly, and it could be game changing. If your opponent's retreating, softening up, uh, you're softening them up, kind of like what uh, I would be doing with my uh, pre Marina decks, you can finish it off with this. So, Lysander built in nothing to, you know, bring the game under your control, but something to help finish it off. So, Moving on, we have Lapras. Ooh, King has gotten this back. So if this is your first Pokemon, great. If this is your second Pokemon, it's not so great. Hmm? This is uh, this is currently Volcanion's the Volcanion EX attack, three shot potential. It's just technically two, but it has this uh, this Pokemon can't attack next turn. So you need a Zora Arc, or you need Poker Ranger to get the two shot out of this. Otherwise, if this this is a guaranteed two shot if you have those help. So a pure Lapras deck. It's doable, maybe not too amazing. And, okay, so we have, do have the Ice Beam GX, 100, always paralyzes, uses once, but, oh man, Pokemon Center Lady, switch, it's gonna run away and escape. So, if you, it may cause your opponent to get stuck, and be able to, you'll be able to two-shot, but it's not instantly one-shotting. Your opponent gets another turn, they get time, they get something to who counter it, so, yeah, it's playable. It's doable. If I had to make a deck out of it, I'm pretty sure I'll be okay with it. But it would be like, it's not going to, wow, wow. Not like, decidualize. So, Professor Kukui, finally we get to you. Ooh, yes. Two cards. Kind of like a Tiano. I'm secretly a big fan of Tiano. Okay? So, two cards instead of one. That's okay, but you get the 20 damage just like Giovanni. Giovanni doesn't give you any cards. Professor Kukui does. So, you're probably going to be splashing one of this. This 20 damage is specific. It helps a lot of Pokemon we talked about get that two shot. So, I'll, I'll put Professor Cookie in my deck. One or two. I'll be using, relying on Sycamore and N still though. So, okay, moving on. Lima, Ilima. Yeah, there we go. Ilima. If you need draw power, you're not going to use this because it's Birch right here. You, everybody flips a coin. If had six card, yes. Kind of like Birch. Birch gives you even more. And if Tails 3 gets even less than Birch and you're stuck. So for yourself, if you're using this card, you're gonna you may screw yourself over. But your opponent, they may they may benefit. It's all luck. You're not gonna put Illima in your deck. So no Pokemon. No, no. Goomshoot we talked about. Donald Trump. Anything else? We're going XP Share Rotom. Timer Ball! Flip two coins, this is kind of like Evil Soda. On average, it gets you one Pokemon, but you get to put it into your hand instead of directly on the Pokemon, which may activate their effects. So, the chances are in your favor. Sometimes nothing, sometimes even two, which for Decidueye would be excellent, so... I would actually... This is upgrade to Evil Soda, and Evil Soda isn't played much, so... It's not bad, it's not bad. There are a lot of evolutions in the Sun and Moon expansion, and I would definitely want to try this out. So, moving on, question hammer, reprint, beware, nope, doesn't have the stats. Hi, Donald Trump. Hurting in the air. We got to talk about you because this is, you know, one of the stage twos that you may want to play. You would not use to support your deck because it costs a lot of deck space. It's a stage two. But hey, look at this ability. When you use this ability, you pick an item, only an item card, like a crushing hammer, like an ultra ball. It's going to be very useful for setting itself up because it's eating a lot of bench base and you want to attack with it eventually. Woo! Four energy attack, two shot potential, another boring stage two, but with something very nice to help you support gain momentum and build it up. So, I, it's worth taking a look at. We may be surprised about this. So, moving on, Spinda. Nope. The good Eevee. Kangaskhan. Four coins flips. Only a hundred average damage. No. Rom Rebumbi. That sounds weird. Healing Pollen. Free 20 damage. Any Pokemon once. Very easy to set up. Very easy to destroy. If this 20 damage is helping something else built. It has to be helping something else, and really, if it pushes your Pokemon above and giving them an extra hit to survive, if this 20 is making the difference, yeah, that depends on the meta, meta if it will. But 20 is low, 
we really have to help it with something else. Maybe. Only very specific decks really want to say, uh, let's see what works. Yancy EX? Lugia EX? They'll definitely love the healing with those shielding decks. So, there are many variants of Sogaleo. Skarmory Metal Sound discard all special energy cards of your Pokemon and your opponent Pokemon. Very specific. It's like a super enhanced hammers, except you have to play it, load it up with energies, use one of your valuable attacks so you would never replace this with enhanced hammers. Moving on, Alolan's Ductrio. This is like a better version of what exists right now. Team Mag... No. The other team. So team Aqua's Mag... Muck. That Pokemon does what this does. It increases the re tree cost of the enemy Pokemon. Now the Muck gives everybody more retreat cost, so that depends on what strategy you're doing with this. But the defending Pokemon only gets this. I mean, you're, they're going to be using switches, escape ropes. I don't think this is going to be a big deal that you would put four copies of to reliably use it in your deck space. It may work with specific strategies, but you're not going to get much game out of it. I'm already thinking of what those cards are. Maybe like Feral Thorn, an old, old Gudra. Nah, not gonna replace them. So, this is a bit of a miss right here. Crocodile, one of those, you know, okay stage tools. Not very special. We're gonna move on. No Persian, not even a two shot. Oh, I don't know if you made it to this point. I know you're still listening to me, but this guy's bomb. Like, if you want the best budget deck that's coming out, this thing right here. Here we go. Team play. This is uh, something you can easily fill up with. Let's see. No, we haven't even talked about the effect. Does 10 damage plus 30 more for every Persimian on your bench. So can you quickly get a basic Pokemon out? Like using the new, uh, what is it? The Nest Ball or in particular uh, Bridget. Oh, Bridget will get all three of them out right away. So what is the average damage? 130. Two shots any Pokemon in existence. Only needs double cause energy. Basic. Works with Fighting Fury Belt for 140. It's so fast. So easy to set this up. I mean, I want to do this deck right away. I mean, you're on a budget, make a Persimian deck, and you're going to kick some butt. It is fast. It is easy to do. You're the... I... You can't even block this with any abilities. You are one scary Pokemon. They're going to have to take six for simians out to get rid of it so uh, you know what you would use for this buddy buddy rescue do that so moving on we have cosmo and ah this is this is a bit, bit of a miss let's talk about this as long as this guy's in play when you're put it retreats i think they have to actually retreat meaning they have to click the retreat button or do something and then the new pokemon's poison so when you ko something it may not work and because of that limitation the free uh, 10, 20 damage that you get out of this. It may not be worth the four deck space, guys. But we're going to be moving on. You would use Ariados over this and use the stadium to help you out. Ariados always, always poison. So, moving on. We talked about this. Alt Crobat. Mm. It's nice that these things are getting reprinted. I think there's a Crobat break around the corner somewhere. Maybe it's already been out. But this is, the stats are not lining up. Trip Poison, 3 damage per turn. Now with the 250 effects this thing is gonna take a while to tick in and it's guaranteed only 30 damage so it's it's what it would be good if it was faster but this is a stage two well, too late for that now a surprise tax this is something uh scissors has right now when you switch it out for the bench and attacks you get 120 damage if you have something like a zorark you can do 120 120 120 other cards can do it that are much more interesting we're gonna skip you crowbat and Move it on. Oh, no. 60 hit points. When you knock this out, they take 60 damage just like it's always wearing a bursting balloon. Not worth your deck space. A walk. Araquanid prevents all damage done by your opponent's fire Pokemon. Are you going to be playing a fire deck all the time? Not worth the deck space. Move it on. Wishy washy. No. I believe when this is on your bench, you can discard anything that. You want to attach to a low hit point, no damage Pokemon, and put it back in your hand. There may be some strategy in the future that this may help out, but for now, why would I just want to throw it on the bench and put it back up? And everything's discarded too, so... Why would I want to send stuff to my discard? 
I don't know. I don't know. So we're gonna, you know, put it on the show. Think about it later if it works with a future strategy. Gold duck. Wow. 180 damage, one energy. Works very well with the star me from this current evolution expansion. Here's how it works. 60 damage. You discard two energies. Wait. It may not be 180. It may just be 120. You discard up to two water energies and it discards 60 times. Every one you discard. So one energy, 120 damage, two shot potential, and it's very weak. So if you want to use a gold duck break attack and actually fight with it, you would use this gold duck instead and it kicks some butt. Yeah, nice upgrade to that. So it's only 120. I thought I was like, oh, I could have one. Nope. Read it properly, Donald. So Torkoal, no. Arcanine, a weaker but faster Charizard. Charizard stage two, more hit points, even a bit more damage. Same exact attack, and you can't use the nice ability it has, so probably not. There is an Arcanine break though, so we'll have to see. The current Arcanine is really good though. So, Serena, Queenly Majesty. Once during your turn, you look at your opponent's hand. You get to choose the best card to get rid of. I'm gonna choose a draw supporter. I see that you're gonna get stuck. Your hand's gonna get stuck. You're screwed. Now, you can use, you know, uh, let's see, delinquent, many cards that reduce your opponent's hand count and just get the most valuable card out the way. They may have multiple, like, sick moys or ends in their hand, so it may not work. So we'll have to see about that. Now, drop kick, 80 damage, heals 20. It's a three shot, but that's okay, given with its good stats and this very good lock ability. You would use this as a main fighter and just back it up with a, some other annoying tech and it's gonna kick some butt. I don't, I, I'm not liking this so far, so I, I'm scared of it. I have some doubts because if you get a very powerful opponent that gets a quick powerful EX and stomps these things, you're in trouble. So it may or may not shut it down too, so there is a bit of a risk factor. Overall, I'm a little scared, but I'm not too worried about it just yet. We'll see. And if, uh, if I'm really looking for a counter, Sushi Master or the new Oranguru may softly help you with the with the, the, the lock that's putting you under. So, whew, I'm running out of gas, guys. Let's finish this up. Fury Cutter. Ooh, so many coin flips. So random damage. Skip it. Butterfree. Nope. Doesn't even hit the two shot potential. We're almost done. We are done. I need some water after this. So. Overall, there are a lot of good decks you can make out of Sun and Moon. Ooh, the, I mean, one of the big ones that are just jumping to my head. I mean, I want to make all the new GX ones, but that, that Persimian, that Persimian is like the best budget deck, the best expensive uh, Morks one. Decidueye. Decidueye, the best GX. Tauros is the best basic GX. And Persimian, those three, I love. So, I'm excited for when it comes out. So, we're going to have a great time making new decks with these. All right. I think that's it. I hope I, I hope uh, this helps you some way. And, we, you know, when it actually comes out, check back here and you, you'll you be good. So, that's it. Thank you very much, Integrals and the Frenchels. I'll see you back in my kitchen later today for Beedrill. We're going to jump into that now. So, bye-bye. Okay, water.